Okay. So, Africa. I come back from Africa and I go to Vegas. And I think I spoke to him right before Vegas. But anyhow, he was still in the apartment that I was leasing in North Dakota. And um, I was taking the lease out of my name. And when I, I think that might have been June time frame. So anyhow, I went and I cleared the place. He went somewhere else. But, and it's weird because we spoke about that and it didn't, there didn't seem to be a forcing problem. But apparently there was. But once again, that's not something that me and him would have had, me and my real brother would have had an issue over. So, July, our cousin, well, June, our half brother had a wedding, he was in it or whatever. Something that I noticed about these people is they start referring to people as their property. It's always my. And I'm looking like, well, isn't it our, <laughs> you know, our cousin, our mom, our dad, you know, and they're always like, yeah, my this, your that, that type of thing, separation. So anyhow, he goes to the half brothers wedding. He was in it that next month. I was at my cousin's wedding in Colorado, and it was weird. In August, I was making a big investment, like my first one ever. And um, let's see. I called him because I'm like, hey, this is someone that I've done nothing but like help our entire lives. So I'm like, okay, surely, you know. Hey, why don't you let me borrow this for my investment? And he's like, no, and he pretty much shit it on real estate. And I'm like, okay, you know, no big deal. And I was really only asking because if I did it with my own money, I'd have enough, I will only have enough to survive for the next six months. And most people say that's good, but I mean, it's real estate. And it was me by myself. So, anyhow, that happened to all this. We didn't speak again for a while. He turned that down, anyhow. Like, that was an absolute no. Um, our cousin passed away also in August. She passed away in August. He was there. He came to Akron for the funeral, but he didn't attend the funeral. <sighs> months go by, months go by, months go by, months go by. I made, like I said, I ended up making an investment. My six months are up. So right now I'm ending my lease in February. I'm closing out my lease. And I'm in the National Guard right now. That was really my only source of income outside of the money that I saved up. This is someone that's never had a financial hardship. <laughs> okay. And um, so I'm like, okay. I'm gonna, um, anyhow, the next time I saw him was April of 2013. I'm trying not to go too deep into the story because I'm a details person. I'll tell you literally every detail. So I'm just gonna stick to the facts. 2013, April, I was home visiting. I asked my mother to watch my dogs. I had a drill weekend coming up, so I had to leave like the weekend of the 20th or something like that. Um, he shows up. We, we weren't expecting him, but he showed up looking really bad and not like himself. He didn't look like himself at all. And um, like I said, I ended up leaving because I have I had a um a drill weekend coming up. And I wanna say a few months later, I ended up asking him to borrow like a, a small amount of money, you know, like two thousand dollars, and it was two thousand dollars here and then another thousand dollars there, which makes three thousand dollars total. And this is someone I've done nothing but help. And honestly, like other than react the way that he did when this whole thing hashed out, I would have thought that he would have been like, you know, more than happy that. Oh my God, this is about time. Like you finally need something and I can help you for a change. But it was nothing like that. But it was not him. Because my brother would have handled that way differently. And this guy came home claiming to have spent all his money gambling, but nothing added up. Nothing added up. And if I show up with a new item like golf clubs, 
it'd be a problem. He kind of tried to hassle me about it, and I have to check his ass. So, anyhow, I'm in Georgia. I go to South Carolina after that and hang out at my buddies for a few days or a few weeks before I come back home to Ohio in August. And in between that time, I talked, spoke with his um, girlfriend a lot, and she was having issues with him. And that's kind of the matter that I spoke about briefly in the other video. There's no need in going into that anymore. Um, at the end of 2013, there was a party. There was a party in September. Like I said, I'm a details person. So I remember everything that this individual did that made no sense, that was not like the person that we know. And I could very well go into each and every detail. And that's kind of what I prepared for our court case. Because I'm not going to have anyone coming around blowing up on me whenever they feel like it. And trying to attack my mental state. Because he has an agenda in mind. So anyhow. End of 2013. I pull up. I'm now on an assignment in Pennsylvania. I leave in like November I think. I might have got to that assignment in November. Or either. Yeah it was November. Middle of November. And um. I reach out to these people and, you know, it's like, okay, things are different now. Things have gotten a little bit better, blah, blah, blah. But that was not the conversation. I pulled a overnight mission trying to get there for my nephew. Like, I just wanted to drop him off some gifts for Christmas. So I show up and I'm pretty much like, it took the entire time off for me to get there with the snow and get back in time for my ship. So I come and I pull up on him and my mother having an argument. And this was kind of like the game changer. This was the game changer because he's never really acted this way with her before. And I mean, they're like full blown. Even a little, you know, like she's pushing up on him because she's mad. She's irate. And he's not pushing her back or anything, you know what I'm saying? But he's being very disrespectful. And all of his uncles are here, and no one is saying anything. So I show up, and I'm like, I'm trying to get my nephew together and put him in the car so he doesn't have to witness it. I call my dad. He shows up, but he showed up for nothing. Showed up to do nothing. And I'm like, I told everyone right then and there, the, boy, the girlfriend, the mom and dad, like, hey, you know what? I don't know what's up with this dude, but I can arrange for his ass to get well because sometimes that's what's wrong with people. They're just... They need a good ass whooping. And all of these actions have been absolutely unacceptable. And no one wanted to get on board. So it got worse. It was the game changer. Because now he's like, okay, boom, I got that one out the way. I don't got to worry about her. This woman has taken care of this child for the first three years of his life. She's been great to them. And up until whatever happened to this woman, the girlfriend, she always seemed to have a mind of her own. Meaning that no matter what went on between those two, she would still make sure she maintained her relationship with her mother, my mother. Because that thing is not my brother. So anyhow, um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. 2014. Yeah, we're rolling in 2014. Anyhow, like I said, that was a mission. Like, I tried to hurry up, get there, get back. <sighs> Pulled up to that mess going on in the garage. Anyhow, I left. The next time I was home was May of 2014. May 2014. June, I'm pregnant. When I get there, I ask, where is she at? I ask this individual to ride with me and my mother to Georgia because I had a storage unit in Georgia and I needed to get some things out as well as exchange and purchase another car. Because like I said right now, as you know, this is still like 
me coming out of this financial ordeal. And I'm weathering it. I'm like, okay, you know, it's not a big deal. But this whole pregnancy thing really threw me off because it was unexpected and it was the furthest thing from what I wanted. That really threw me off. And it's weird because the spirit always knows. The entire time everyone's happy about it and just like kind of celebrating. My mother's like super happy because, you know, she wants to be a grandmother. Because this guy got to where he started keeping the kids away. So anyhow, me and the girlfriend, we ended up being pregnant around the same time. I know this child isn't going to last. I don't know how it's not going to come to be, but I knew it wasn't going to come to be. These people, these people are the reason that it didn't come to be. And it looked it like a natural cause. And for those of you that have ever given birth or had a premature birth, you know that if it's anything before 23 weeks, they can't save the child. So if I was at 22 weeks, like with a few days would have made a difference. So I'm on bed rest, you know, anything. But like I said, it ended up working out in my favor because I really, really, really didn't want it to be. And um, yeah, so that happened. And it seems like it's another guy now because this guy both claims to have recollection and not have had recollection of me being pregnant. And I told him. I didn't tell him when I told everyone else. Because when you start disrespecting women in the family, it's a problem. And then you already acting funny with me about money. And you know I'm just like not the type to care about money anyhow. I'm a responsible individual. But I'm just saying it's not at the top of my, I just happen to do well. So... When he did that, it, it was, yeah, it's a problem now. So like I said, I told him, but I didn't tell him when I told everyone else. October, oh yeah. So anyhow, the premature birth takes place in September of 2014. I wrote him a letter making peace with it in 2010 because I decided to write the letter for a lot of reasons. Because... As you probably can tell, I can be a handful if I'm mad. And it's a reason why my relationships are always in good standing. People don't piss me off. I'm just not one of those people that you should piss off. But this guy, he, he seemed to not know me. He didn't know my baseline state. He didn't know my baseline morals. He didn't know who I was. Yet, they're telling him to do everything that I do. So they're watching me if I volunteer and get into volunteering because that's what she's doing. The entire time, his agenda, his agenda is to take my life's plans. Now look, I didn't form those plans until February 2016, maybe. That would be about right. I'm no. The end of 2015, and I just revised them a few times within that time frame. So they know what I'm planning on doing. They know what I'm planning on doing. And they're planning on killing me, taking my plans, and giving them to this imposter. And they told, they didn't tell me this. Like I said, I was under attack for a few years, not even knowing. It didn't become aware to me until February, no, March of 2017, this year, March of 2017, that I was under attack and that these people were trying to kill me. That's when it became clear. And the whole time they're like, yeah, we're trying to work out a deal. You know, like this life isn't for you. We're trying to work out a deal with your brother. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. And they, they want you to, they do it in a matter where they expect you to lay down. But that explains the drug-induced blackout that I had in 2015. Like I said, they intended for me to die. And the spirit always knows beforehand. So anyhow, 
2014, I wrote this letter to kind of um, just touch on some of the matters that weren't really sitting well with me, some of his actions. And I'm just like, okay, obviously, you, let me just remind you of who I am. Just close this off. Anyhow, he comes over and he acts like nothing's wrong and we make peace about this money thing. We must have made peace about this money thing three or four times. And he come and shake hands and say it's okay to go right behind my back and mention it to somebody else like it's a problem. Like we didn't just agree to shake hands and leave it alone. It didn't matter. So anyhow, 2015 rolls around. There wasn't a whole, whole lot of encounters. Like I said, within my time frame there, this thing was avoiding me. He was purposefully avoiding me. I purposefully ruined these relationships. So he goes around these people. And like I said, you can't hang around an individual like this because it has a lot of stuff on that. At the end of 2014, 13, this guy, I don't know where has a seizure. Today, he is what would be considered handicapped in a way. He could recover from it, but it's a slow recovery. I mean, by the time all this is done, by the time I'm done, he'll be recovered. Because they don't have to take all that shit off of him. They're laying stuff on these people. This guy, seizure. He starts having seizures probably, I don't know, two, three times a year. And it got to the point where they wouldn't even tell me anymore because I'm not sure why they wouldn't tell me anymore. I think they didn't like me being involved. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um. I'm going to have to pick up on this some other time. 